morning everybody how are you guys it's Janice Batista here I hope that everyone is having a precious morning today I hope that everyone had a good week a nice weekend um I wanted to talk to you guys this morning I know that a lot of you um are probably at work right now um I know that some of you might catch the replay a little bit later on today um but it's like I said it's totally okay um this is just something that the Lord put in my heart this morning and I hope that um good morning everybody I hope that you know this periscope is a is a blessing to you this morning because um we all str have struggled at one point in our lives with dealing uh, or maybe you guys may be struggling with this right now um dealing with anger resentment and you know being god bless you sweetie how are you you know sometimes it may be strong um or it may be hard for for us as Christians to overlook an offense and it's not easy when people hurt us and say okay you want me to just you know let people hurt me and then just act like boom like nothing happened like whatever no but it's just that you know God's word gives us a little bit of wisdom to help us you know when we read the word of God the word of God is um in the word of God is inspired by God so when we read the word of God it, it's giving us tools sometimes a lot of people they like to go through problems on their own you know they don't like anybody to sit there and help them deal with their problems cope with their problems um some people they don't like to have bueno dia como esta corazoncito um wow i'm facing this right now and it, it isn't god good and faithful yes you know because sometimes when we're going through situations we don't want other people to get in and help us face the problem you know it's real easy to find a friend you know um around you and 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 they'll they'll hold your hand for you to walk away from the problem why because there's a saying that a lot of people say that misery loves company so when people say okay yeah misery loves company you know they don't want you to face the problem why because every time you confront a, a problem you're facing a fear that is inside of you and you sometimes as Christians if we want to go into the battlefield right and we want to you know say that oh yeah I'm Christian and you know God is with me and it's like you know how many times we've seen in the Bible where a lot of people thought that God was with them and they went into you know thinking that they were going to go into the battlefield and having um you know the 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 backbone and the support from God and God, you know, wasn't with them. He said, you know what? I'm not with them. And then they didn't see the victory, but those that knew how to trust God and obey God and listen to God, every time they went into the battlefield, they came out victorious. Um, you know, sometimes when people go into the battlefield, do you want to make sure that whatever situation you're facing with, tengo la, la pollinita así y el, el bun. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes when you go into the battlefield, you want to make sure that God is with you. Why? Because there's certain situations in your life that you got to face. You got to face your financial situation. You got to face your spiritual situation situation you have to face your marriage you got to face your relationships with your pastors um your relationship with other christians that are around you Gracias, corazoncito. You know, um, you have to face all these different things in your life and in your ministry. And when you want to move ahead in life, you know, you want to make sure that you have the right tools so that when you're going through certain situations, you don't say, okay, I feel alone. Because a lot of people, when they don't face, um, battles that they're dealing with, a lot of people, when they don't face the scars that they have deep within, they take it out on everybody else. And sometimes I, I've met people in my life where, I've tried to help them. I've tried to be there for them. You know, I try to be a support system whenever I can. But unfortunately, some people have scars. And I've seen a lot of people come in our church and leave our church the same way. Why? Because they got deep scars. And, you know, no matter what kind of a person you try to be, you could be the nicest person. You could always be there for people giving them rides and, you know, trying to help them out, you know, financially sometimes whenever you can. You can be a great person, an awesome person in the 
faith. But if you're dealing with people that have scars that are really, really deep and they still don't want to face them, because how do you face them? You know, I've seen so many people come into our lives and, you know, it could be a year that, you know, we try to help them and it could be a year that passes, two years that pass, three years that pass, and it hurts because us as Christians, we, you know, the ones that are really faithful, the ones that really see God's hand moving in their life, they go from glory to glory. They see God working so many awesome things. And when, you know, sometimes I know it may be a little bit doubtful for us to hear, oh, wow, I wish God would work in me the way he works in that person. Oh, I wish things were better for me the way it was in that person. Oh, why is it that this person is always, you know, blessed by God? Why is it that this person's always prospering? Why is it that this person is never miserable? Why is it that this person cannot curse so much? Why is it that this person may act like, you know, nothing is happening in the world? Why? Because certain people um, are led. God bless you, sweetie. Certain people are led by the Word of God, by the Holy Spirit of God. I can testify that I have gotten boxed in, yes, when facing a situation. And you know what? When you get faced with those situations, um, you know, brother, what happens is that the enemy, he tries to take advantage of it. And he tries to knock us down, make us feel like, you know what? That problem is bigger than you. But sometimes we have to always remember. We always have to remember that when the enemy is... One of the things that always helped me get ahead in life when I... I had a, 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 a hard situation because believe me, I had so many hard situations and this word that I'm telling you guys this morning is not easy. The word we're going to be reading this morning is in Proverbs 19, 11, amen. And it says the word of God is read in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It says good sense makes one slow to anger. I'm not going to sit here and say that I wasn't slow to, I, I was always slow to anger. No, even, you know, every day is a, is a daily battle of us trying to die to who we used to be. Of course, you know how many times I've tried to help people out and do favors for them and they give you nasty attitudes or sometimes you try to be there for somebody and you could be there for them for three months, four months for them having their back. But the minute you can't have their back once, the minute they see something in your life is not the way they want it because there are people that bring f contaminated friendships. The things that's and that when I say contaminated friendships is like I always say is what a person has in their heart. People want you to always do what they want you to do. They want you to act the way they want you to act and if you don't meet their standards you know they're very quickly to just you know x you out and push you to the side and say, you know what, I, I'm not rocking with you. I'm not messing with you because, you know, you fake and you phony and you a hypocrite. But when people have, they don't have a maturity in them, they're not going to know how to keep a good, long lasting friendships. And when you learn to, to live and obey the word of God, you're going to be able to be strong enough to control your anger and control certain situations, even when they don't go your way. Because that's why he says, the word of God says, good sense makes one slow to anger so what does that mean that means that no matter how many times somebody dislikes you no matter how many times people try to put you down and say oh you know what you're not worth anything god is never going to use you you're never going to do anything for god's glory you're going to remain you know you you a piece of crap and you're going to always be a piece of crap no matter how many times the enemy uses people in our lives to throw dart at, at our emotions to this you know because you could be a good person and every time you, you you, you hear the word of God, you say, you know what? You, you get impacted by the word of God. That's why the word of God, the word of God says is like a sword that penetrates the, the most intimate part of your heart. Why? Because there's something that we as babies in Christ like to listen to when we hear the word of God, when we go to church on Sundays, we hear the word of God and something in our spirit and our soul provokes a change through the Holy Spirit. So what do we need for that? We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need to let him know each and every day, Lord, we need you. We can't do this without you. That's why I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of people, they thought they had the victory because why? The word of God says that, you know, the heart is foolish. Don't, don't, don't trust your heart because your heart is deceitful. Your heart will trick you. And you're, if you get led by your heart and you get led by your emotions, we're going to find ourselves like little babies on the floor, upset with this person, upset with that person saying, why, you know, they always got, people always got to betray me. Why? And sometimes, you know, we may make a problem in our mind and it's really in your mind, you know, because we can't always control 
control everybody else. And when you realize that you can't control everybody else, you're going to be victorious. I'm telling you, I deal with people, you know, a lot of people may say, oh, how, how do you do it when people disrespect you? And how do you, how are you so strong enough to just go around them and just sit there and act like nothing happened? It's real easy. I, I just acknowledge that the God that I serve teaches me how to live. He teaches me how to live. So I obey him because the word of God says that those that are um, children of my father will listen to hear my commands, will listen to my words and obey my teachings. So when I'm around certain people, whether it's in a church atmosphere or not, whether I see them every now and then, whether I left you know whether they left our friendship on bad terms because how do you know a person leaves a relationship yes amen by the always going to lead you to have understanding the fruits of the spirit is and the holy spirit gives discernment you know there are certain people like i said i i want to help them face those challenges i want to help them face those problems but they don't want that and there are certain people in your life that are going to not want your help they're not going to want you to, to to help them get rid of their anger why because it's easier for them they feel like you know it's like you don't want to let it go because if you have an anger and a resentment with somebody and you don't let it go, you know, you have to learn to let it go and be at peace with yourself, regardless if the other person doesn't want to make peace. You know how many times I've had people in my life that I try to um, resolve an issue because I know it's a, and, I, and I'm talking about family members, close family members that, you know, they just like to come and bother your life and, and, you know, make you feel miserable and do everything in their power to distract you and, you know, from God's calling and they just want you to be like dumb, angry and resentful resentful and you know th that's not my cup of tea and when I deal with people like that you know when you try to make peace with somebody you try to make peace with people but they don't want to make peace with people you got to learn as a Christian to make peace with yourself and when you make peace with God and you make peace with yourself your spirit and your soul it, it, there's something that's inside of the heart that just gets released into the atmosphere and then that's why God says Jesus says through his word those of you that have all these burdens and all these things that are heavy laden that have all these heavy things weighing on their chest he's like give them to me but sometimes it's hard for us to release them and just give them to him and we hold on to that anger and listen to what this part says. He says, and then it is his glory to overlook an offense. So if you're slow to anger and you understand and you're capable of, you know, because God doesn't want you guys to be in the same level where you have been. This morning, we're all going to pray together. and We're going to pray that whatever anger and resentment that you got. And I don't normally pray on here on the periscope, but, you know, the Lord is putting it in my heart to do it this morning. Those of you that may be feeling like, you know what, there's too many people that have been burnt, you know, you, know, you have burdens on your on your chest, on your heart, on in your life because of that and our cause because of other people. We're gonna pray this morning that those burdens are released. Why? Because you want God's anointing, God's favor to follow you. And if you want God's favor and anointing to follow you, you wanna be able to release that. Why? So that you can give God's people what did Solomon ask God? He said, God, give me wisdom to deal with your people. He didn't tell him, Oh, give me, you know wisdom to deal with all these uh, these people and, the, and, and their anger issues and all this stuff because look at Moses Moses had to deal with the people and their anger issues all the time talking about him Jesus had to deal with this stuff Paul had to deal with this stuff I can go on and on with the people the, the powerful men and women of God and were they perfect no they weren't perfect Paul was a murderer too Moses was a murderer we look at all these different people in the Bible, they all weren't perfect. And you know what? You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But through God, through the Holy Spirit, He's going to make you perfect. Sometimes we like to doubt. And I don't know if any of you are doubting this morning the calling that God has placed in your life. You know, don't doubt that God has called you because of other people and the negative things that they say. You know, I had a situation face itself at church where I had a certain person come that I, they just bring a negative spirit and it threw me off balance. 
balance. You know, I was in the pulpit and I was preaching with my husband and, you know, it threw me off balance. Why? But I had to remember, have that dominion, but it's not easy knowing that there's certain people that they're angry and they're always going to be angry no matter what you do. There's certain people that they're always going to be angry. They're always going to be bitter. So you have to deal with that yourself and say, God, today is a new day. I'm not going to be angry no more with people. I'm not, I'm not going to be, you know, take everything so personal. I'm going to learn to trust you and, and grow in the spirit. Amen. So let's just pray really quickly. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before your presence, Father God, and I ask you, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you bless, Father God, every person that's going to be listening to this preaching, Father God, on Periscope, on Facebook, Father God, I pray that you bless, Father God, each and every one of them, Father God, I pray that if any of them, Father God, have been dealing with certain issues, Father God, that have to do with the anger, Father God, I pray that in Jesus' name, Father God, you help them release, Father God, any burdens, any weight, Father God, that they may be carrying, Father God, around around each and every day. Father God, sometimes we like to carry around like big book bags all of our problems that we have with our friends, with people at church, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, problems that we have with certain family members, problems that we have with our children, problems that we have with our parents. Father God, problems that we have with ourselves and in our ministry, Father God. Sometimes, Father God, people may be feeling the pain, Father God, of their childhood. Maybe some of them have been, you know, dealing with things from a long time ago and they just haven't been strong enough to, to deal with the pain, to deal with the hurt, and deal with the people, Father God, that have been causing them all this pain. Father God, I pray that you teach them, Father God, to start being wise and use spiritual wisdom and help them, Father God, each and every one of them control their anger. Father God, help them control their emotions, Father God, and help their emotions, Father God, not get the best of them, Father God. And when it comes to the offense, Father God, I pray that right now, each and every one of them, maybe um, you may um, guard them with the armor Father God of God this morning and that they may be strong Father God in their faith Father God and they may be covered with the armor of God from their heads Father God all the way to their feet Father God and I pray Father God that through your wisdom through the help of Jesus and through the help of the Holy Spirit and the Father Father God I just pray Father God that they're strong enough to overlook an offense Father God I know how difficult you know those challenges may be because I have faced them myself Father God and I just pray Father God that you help each and every one of them be strong father god and and not be of a weak spirit father god every time people offend them every time people hurt them every time people treat them like they're not worthy every time people treat them like they're not good enough like they're never gonna amount to nothing father god i pray that through your holy spirit you give them strength to go into church on sundays and receive each of your word father god each and every sunday give them the strength father god to open up your bible father god to read your word father god i pray that through this word and through this message, Father God, many people, whether they may be listening now or like I said on the replay, whether they're going to be listening on Twitter, on Facebook, Father God, or, you know, on Periscope, Father God, I just pray, Father God, that this message may be a blessing, Father God, to each and every one of their lives. And we pray that Satan will no longer hold them captive, Father God, with their emotions, Father God, so that the enemy... One of the things that the Lord just put in my mind is that sometimes when we fail as Christians, we don't want to get back up. And there's a reason why God says, and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but there's a reason why God says you fall, you know, 77 times and 77 times God's going to pick. You could fall seven times, 77 times. And the Lord, with all his grace, with all his love, with all, you know, that is within him, he's going to continue to pick you up. Every day is a new start. And how do you always start? You just say, God, you know what? I failed. I'm sorry. Sorry, help me get back up. And, and it's just as simple as that. A simple, quick little prayer. And sometimes we make things so complicated. Like, oh, I don't want to go pray for 20 minutes. I don't want to go open up my Bible for 20 minutes. I'm not feeling it right now. And, and we let all these worldly things contaminate us and fill us up. And then we bring that stuff back into the church and God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to face the problem and say, God, look, this is my situation right now. This is my problem and I need you to help me out. Even if you're cooking, even if you're in the bathroom, I don't care if you're sitting on the toilet. I don't care if you're driving. I don't care if you're at work. Just give God 30 seconds. Look, 30 seconds. God, this is my situation. This is my problem. I can't stand this person. I don't like this situation that's going on. Lord, please just help me fix it and take a deep breath in. 
<sighs> and let it out and you're going to feel so much more better because that's when we give our burdens to God. God takes them and he helps us find rest for our souls and for our spirit. Amen. The word of God says that and make this up. I, I, I listened to it. It took me a few years to finally get it. But when I finally got it, I was like, okay, you know what? I don't got to carry this problem no more. You know what? I don't got to be bitter with you. You know what? Every time you see me, if you, you got to deal with people like that. Sometimes every time if they see you and they want to treat you like crap or they still want to hold on to that business but you know what let them be you can't control other people remember i said you can't change them but you could control yourself and you can control your atmosphere and your circle and you could easily tell people you know what if you're going to contaminate me and you're going to bring your anger and all your junk keep your junk in your trunk this is my area where when i'm when you're in my space and my zone is holy ground and and you know like i always tell people choose the right friends choose the right people to have in your life be selective with your family be selective because you know what I I don't let my family come in in my home and disrupt my home. I have a peaceful home with my husband, a peaceful home with my kids. I'm not going to allow anybody with their junk and their stuff keep contaminating my house. You know, we, we have to be wise and use that wisdom, amen, and, and, not, and if those people are causing us to stumble separate yourself from them and, and just stay focused with God. It's better to be with God than to be with the world because when you're with the world, you're going to face the challenges that the world faces. But when you're with God, he's going to help you live in the world. That's why God says you live in the world, but you're not from the world because the way God wants you to think and the way God wants you to operate is totally different from the world. It's totally different. It's two things. It's like all you and vinegar, they don't mix. Amen. So I love each and every one of you guys. Um, um, may you all have a great day. I have to get going because I think I have to go out with a friend of mine to go get some lunch and probably go blow out my hair. But I love you guys so very much and, you know, have a good week. Okay, guys, I love you. Bye bye.